The manufacturing process of TMT, thermomechanically treated bars, involves several key stages to ensure the strength, durability, and resistance required for modern construction. First, high-quality raw materials, including sponge iron, are melted and impurities are removed. This molten steel is then cast into billets, which are reheated before passing through a series of rolling stands. The stands are equipped with variable speed motors to ensure precise rolling tolerances and optimal production speeds. Once hot rolled, the steel bars undergo the critical thermomechanical treatment process. This occurs in a quenching box, where the bars are rapidly cooled through successive stages. The sudden and uniform cooling strengthens the outer layer of the bars, resulting in enhanced surface hardness and durability, while the core remains ductile. This unique combination provides the ideal balance of toughness and flexibility, crucial for withstanding environmental forces like earthquakes. After cooling, the TMT bars are cut to size and transferred for packaging and delivery. Throughout the process, the bars are subject to rigorous quality control checks every 30 minutes, ensuring consistency in physical and chemical properties. The wind tower begins its journey as large steel plates, which are carefully rolled into curved sections to form cylindrical. This process, known as bending, is critical in achieving the desired structure for the tower. At Wind Towers Scotland, this is done using large, industrial-grade rolling machines. These machines gradually bend the steel plates into precise sections that will later be joined to form the tower segments. This step ensures that the tower can withstand the immense forces generated by the wind turbine blades. Once the steel plates are bent, the next crucial step is welding. Here, the rolled sections are aligned and welded together along their seams to create the cylindrical sections of the tower. Multiple sections are welded to build a tower that can stand several meters tall. Wind Towers Scotland employs advanced automated and manual welding techniques to ensure the joints are robust and able to handle the operational stresses over the tower's lifespan. After welding, the assembled tower sections undergo surface preparation and painting. The steel surfaces are first cleaned to remove any contaminants or oxidation, ensuring a strong bond with the protective coating. A primer is applied, followed by layers of industrial-grade paint, which serves as a protective barrier against corrosion, especially since wind towers are often installed in coastal or offshore environments. The painting process at Wind Towers Scotland involves applying multiple coats to ensure long-term durability and protection. Protection. Finally, after the manufacturing process, the wind tower sections are transported from the Camba Town site to the nearby harbor. This efficient logistical setup allows for seamless transportation by sea, demonstrating the facility's capability to support Scotland's renewable energy sector with well-crafted, durable wind towers. The uncoiling process in the Atlas Pipe Pile manufacturing system is a critical initial stage where the raw material, hot rolled coil steel, begins its transformation into a pipe pile. After quality testing, the steel coils are prepared for the tube forming line by being loaded onto an uncoiler, which holds and gradually unwinds the coil as needed. As the uncoiling process begins, the coil is fed into a flattening machine, ensuring the steel strip is straight and ready for further processing. This step is crucial because any residual curvature or irregularity from the coiling process can affect the pipe's formation and weld quality later on. On. The steel is continuously uncoiled in coordination with the rest of the production line, ensuring smooth operation without any interruptions. An important aspect of this process is the joining of successive coils to create a continuous steel strip. The ends of two coils are aligned and joined by a process known as a butt weld. This weld ensures that there is no gap between the coils, maintaining the flow of material through the forming line. However, this butt weld is removed and discarded during the later stages to maintain the integrity of the final pipe. 
The forming process in Atlas pipe pile manufacturing involves transforming the flat steel strip into a cylindrical shape. After uncoiling, the flattened steel enters a series of five forming rollers, each progressively bending the strip into a U-shape. These rollers act like a set of rolling pins, applying gradual pressure to mold the steel from flat into a rounded tube. The curvature deepens with each roll until the strip is about 70% formed. In the final stages, concave and convex rollers push the edges together, ensuring precise alignment before the pipe is welded, preparing it for the electric resistance welding ERW stage. In the welding stage, Atlas pipe piles are joined using electric resistance welding ERW. Copper contact shoes pass electrical current through the steel strip edges, generating heat up to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat fuses the edges together, creating a continuous, high-precision longitudinal weld. Excess weld material is removed, ensuring a smooth seam, and the pipe moves on for testing and finishing. The final preparation stage in the Atlas pipe pile manufacturing process focuses on quality assurance, precise sizing, and cutting the pipe to customer specifications. After welding and ultrasonic testing to verify weld integrity, the pipe undergoes cooling using a controlled stream of water and coolant. This gradual cooling prevents internal stresses, cracking, or splitting, ensuring the structural integrity of the pipe. Following cooling, the pipe moves through Turk's head rollers, which work the pipe into its final precise diameter. These rollers also ensure a superior surface finish, which is critical for both installation and performance in deep foundation projects. The diameter and surface finish are essential for ensuring the pipe fits securely within the project requirements and can withstand harsh environmental conditions. Once sized, the heat number, which was initially engraved on the pipe during the earlier stages, is stenciled onto the exterior. This heat number ensures full traceability back to the steel source and manufacturing data, providing customers with detailed material records for future reference. Quality assurance and traceability are core components of Atlas Pipe Pile manufacturing, ensuring the highest standards for each product. The quality process begins as soon as the steel coils arrive, with technicians testing for tensile strength and yield to guarantee the material meets strict specifications. As the steel progresses through manufacturing, its heat number, a unique identifier assigned during melting, is permanently engraved inside the pipe and later stenciled on the exterior. This heat number allows complete traceability, linking the pile back to its original steel source, production date, and batch information. Throughout the process, multiple checks are conducted to ensure the integrity of the pipe, particularly the weld. Ultrasonic testing verifies the electric resistance weld, ERW, identifying any internal flaws or defects. If any issues are found, the defective section is removed. Timken Steel's forged rolled process is a cutting-edge manufacturing method designed to produce large steel bars with enhanced center soundness and strength. At the heart of this process is Timken Steel's advanced 3,300-ton forge press, which allows for the creation of sound center-engineered steel bars up to 16 inches in diameter. This technology is pivotal in addressing the demand for high-performance steel in industries where reliability and durability are critical. The forged rolled process begins with an as-cast ingot, which is heated in a soaking pit until it reaches a consistent temperature. Once adequately heated, the ingot enters the forge press. With the application of 3,000 metric tons of pressure, the forge press uniformly compresses the metal along its entire length, a key step in improving the internal structure of the steel. This process is highly versatile, accommodating various ingot sizes and requiring multiple forging passes, depending on the desired product characteristics. These repeated forging passes significantly enhance the soundness of the steel's core, ensuring that the bar is structurally robust.
After forging, the semi-finished product is sent to the rolling mill. Here, the rolling process further refines the bar, improving its shape and size precision. This step is crucial for achieving the exacting foot weight and size tolerances required for demanding applications. The forged rolled process, thus, combines the strength benefits of forging with the precision of rolling, resulting in steel bars that are both strong and uniform in shape and size. Timken Steel's investments in this innovative process, alongside advanced inspection technologies like ultrasonic testing ensure that their steel products are of the highest quality. The result is a consistent and reliable supply of large steel bars, meeting the stringent performance expectations of industries worldwide. Steel has been an essential material in human history, with its origins tracing back to the 11th century BC. In its modern form, steel production began in the 19th century, evolving into a robust industry that now generates approximately 1.5 billion tons of steel annually worldwide. In Slovakia, steel production significantly contributes to the country's economy, accounting for about 21% of the gross domestic product. As one of the most recyclable materials available, steel is celebrated for its environmental benefits and its ubiquitous presence in various applications, often unnoticed by consumers. The production of seamless steel tubes begins with the careful preparation of raw materials. Steel scrap, collected from various sources, serves as the primary input. At Zella Zayana Paparizu, this scrap is processed by one of its subsidiary companies, NP at Cork Willets, which specializes in recycling scrap metal from old vehicles and other sources. The recycling process involves several steps, starting at an authorized center where liquids are drained from the vehicles and non-ferrous materials, such as plastics and glass, are removed. Once the scrap metal is processed and cleaned, it is shredded to remove any remaining impurities, resulting in a reduced volume of clean scrap ready for melting. This preparation phase is crucial as it ensures that the steel produced is of high quality, free from contaminants that could affect its properties. The next phase involves the melting of the prepared scrap in an electric arc furnace, which is capable of melting up to 60 tons of scrap per hour. The furnace operates at extremely high temperatures, reaching around 1,620 degrees Celsius. During this melting process, oxidation occurs, and various additives are introduced to create the primary alloying elements necessary for producing high-quality steel. Once the steel is melted, it is poured into a ladle, where it undergoes further alloying in a ladle furnace. This step is vital, as it allows for the precise adjustment of the steel's chemical composition, ensuring that the final product meets specific requirements. After alloying, the molten steel is subjected to continuous casting, a process that shapes the liquid steel into solid forms called blooms. These blooms can have either a square or circular cross-section and are cooled before being transferred to the rolling mill. The capability to produce about 370,000 tons of steel blooms annually highlights the efficiency of this operation. The historical significance of this facility is notable, as it was the first continuous casting plant introduced in Czechoslovakia in 1961, representing a significant technological advancement in steel production. The transformation of steel blooms into seamless tubes is conducted in a two-roll mill. Initially, the steel blooms are cut to the desired length and then heated to rolling temperature in a rotary furnace. The heated blooms are then shaped into circular forms using a piercing press. This process elongates the metal, increasing its length significantly by approximately 20 times its original size. After piercing, the semi-finished product is passed through a drawing reduction belt where the final dimensions are achieved. The production capabilities of this facility are impressive, with over 1 million tubes produced annually, reaching lengths of up to 90 meters. Once cooled, the tubes are cut to the specified lengths, and further quality control measures are implemented to ensure they meet industry standards. 
To enhance the mechanical properties of the tubes, a cold drawing process is employed. This involves drawing the tubes through die plates or mandrels to achieve smaller diameters, sometimes down to just 3 millimeters. This stage requires immense force, equivalent to the power of 10 railway locomotives, to deform the steel without breaking it. After cold drawing, the tubes undergo an annealing process in a continuous annealing furnace. This heat treatment restores the necessary mechanical properties, ensuring that the tubes are neither too rigid nor too brittle, thus making them suitable for various applications. Once the annealing process is complete, the tubes undergo several finishing operations. Straightening ensures that the tubes maintain a flat and uniform shape. Non-destructive testing is employed to eliminate any tubes with defects, while visual inspections confirm the dimensions and appearance of the product. The tubes are then cut to the final required lengths. The edges are smoothed to eliminate any burrs, followed by labeling, packaging, and preparing the tubes for shipment. This meticulous finishing phase is crucial for ensuring that the product meets customer specifications. Importers responding to post-World War II price hikes. Today, it operates four plants, producing a wide range of tools, including machetes, scissors, and drills, with an output of 1 million to 1.1 million machetes monthly. The manufacturing process at Incolma is characterized by a blend of traditional craftsmanship and modern technology. High-quality steel, sourced primarily from the UK and Korea, undergoes several meticulous steps, cutting, marking, laminating, forming, and thermal treatment, including quenching and tempering. The blades are then polished, sharpened, straightened, lacquered, and packaged, ensuring that every machete meets rigorous quality standards. This commitment to precision, inherited from German partners, distinguishes Incolma in the competitive market. Incolma's product portfolio is diverse, catering to both domestic and international markets. The export segment focuses on machetes as the core product, complemented by forged scissors that have found significant demand abroad. The company's offerings are segmented into five brands, Cornetta for manual tools, Barracuda for drills, Colima for agricultural tools, Gavilan Colorado for gardening and construction tools, and Aguila Cornetta, dedicated solely to machetes. The company exports to approximately 45 countries, including markets in Africa and Oceania, with particular emphasis on understanding local needs and preferences. Incolma has successfully penetrated various global markets, from South Africa to Papua New Guinea, demonstrating its adaptability and commitment to meeting diverse customer requirements. Colombia's machete production, led by companies like Incolma, combines tradition with innovation, ensuring high-quality products that cater to both local and international demands while maintaining a strong cultural connection to the land and its agricultural practices.